Rokan 23. That's right. It is here. It's not back. It's here. It's the first one. Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, and industry experts. It is all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues, January 20th through the 22nd of 2023. Now, if you want to go, you got to get tickets, and tickets are on sale at roguecon23.com. That's roguecon, R-O-G-U-E-C-O-N 23.com. Be there. I'm going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. Let's go. Good to go. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. I like your, you get a fresh haircut. Look at my face. And yeah, I was like, okay, something else is different. It's all and it's this, just it's your mustache. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I tried something I was new like, today. this is a new look. I like it. <laughs> it's fun. Did you also shave your head though again? No. Oh, uh-uh. it looks like it. Well, it I looks, trimmed the sides up. Oh, okay. I was like, it looks day, very fresh. But they're more like, shh, yeah. It's not round. Um, I okay. See. Ready to get your notes up and the movie? Yes. Howdy. Hello and hi. And welcome to Boobays. Boobays. That's right. We're your host. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joshua. And we are here to whisper about a movie that terrified me as a kid. Truly. Um, I'm sure. And then, uh, thank God, other people on the internet as well. All the comments that <laughs> were under the movie were literally like, this terrified me. I only remembered this because of this. Or like, my yeah. father scared me as a child with this movie stuff like that everyone um, was traumatized mm-hmm. I could and I was see like, thank god if you were like an eight seven ten year old ish yeah that time really frame, young and then everyone also there were multiple comments being like I thought I like fever dreamed this movie mm-hmm. and could not remember if it was real and that's I thought that for a long time as well because I couldn't remember the name of it and no yeah. one I'd ever asked I've not met a single person in this world who has seen this movie and uh, Until you now question Yay. um did you watch it like this was for sure you watch it like on tv right yeah Is i think like, we had the dvd a dvd or of maybe it, it was okay. a vhs at mm, that point gotcha because i'm like was this a straight to i can't tell was this like a straight to dvd straight to vhs yeah. like or was it like a theatrical because I, I didn't feel see like it was I don't, yeah i didn't see too many like big like trailers of it that's yeah. what i'm saying like how you know movies back like a theatrical release would have um but yeah what movie are we talking about <laughs> milo milo 1998 directed by pascal fanchot and Pascal. written by uh, some other dude's name that I <laughs> had, but then I pulled it away. It was written by Craig Mitchell. Craig. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really have, because I tried to look it up. I didn't really have much information on, like, its release other than the date and yeah. that it was rated R. So, I don't know. That's why I was asking. I was like, was it it's theater? Was it straight to not VHS? A, was like, it, like, because it also gave, like, TV special to me. Yeah, like, that's true. You know? And it it also did come out October. It came out during Halloween season of ninety eight. Oh, good. October sixth. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's basically kind of your uh, somewhat Can standard everyone? child killer. Can urban legend. Yeah, maybe in a way as well. And it it Milo has such an. I don't remember his voice being as comical yeah. as it was. The whole time I was like, why is he talking like this? Yeah. It's I very don't, comical. I felt like they were maybe trying to go like Chucky, but then like Chucky was done super well, even though yeah. his voice is like kind of but like. his voice doesn't even sound like that. No. Yeah. No. It, but his voice but was very. Just kind of. Obviously not the child's. Yeah. Yeah. It felt odd. Mm-hmm. Um, it just felt too funny. Like it felt like it took me out of it because I'm like. Hello, is, Claire. Yeah, the way he was talking and like, <laughs> yeah, that like I was, I was like, like, it sounds like the dude who always stands behind um, what's her name and Hey Arnold. Oh yes. Um, I forget her name. Not like Angelica. Helga. Helga. Yeah, and he's just Helga. like, <laughs> literally. Um, but or someone on Bob's Burgers also. That's I feel like true. Breeze like that. It's jeans. 
the girl he's like dating and then yeah she also makes a those type musical of sounds. yeah and stuff i don't know but <sighs> oh caitlin's choking you guys i just r.i.p no, i just completely missed my mouth I it happens poured it, on my lap. it happens i need to go to bed that happens to me all the time actually <laughs> um so we as we caitlin gathers um we we want to start the movie um going into titles and credits essentially that's what i got no, um, oh yes. and also just to point out we watched this on youtube because i couldn't find <laughs> this find it anywhere anywhere else yeah. yeah it was uploaded to youtube so I checked it wasn't everything like, th- it wasn't the worst quality but it wasn't the best quality if that made sense but it was I, also filmed in 98 so that's you know. true and i i can't i can't hear unless i can read the words oh and there were no subtitles there were no subtitles yeah gotcha. and so there was a lot of times where I'm like, what? Especially when Milo was talking, mm-hmm. that I was like, what the fuck is he saying? Yeah. I I couldn't tell, and I had to rewind a few times to be. I feel like, you on that. What What in the world is being said here? Because yeah. short of having it up like all, all the, the way. way, I couldn't tell what the hell was going on. Well, for me, what also helped is I literally watched it on my phone with headphones. Yeah. So I could hear it really well, and then like see it because it was like you know small and not like on a big screen like you know the pixelated or whatever yeah so i I could see pretty good and hear it pretty well but he was yeah his voice was just kind of took me out a little bit but we start with the title we get some credits um and then we start on some little girls that are swinging um in a park essentially Mm -hmm. they're hanging out and they're waiting for someone but we don't know who yet and the one of the little girl i think it's marianne um is being like he's not going to show up he's He's not going to come it was marianne yeah or no it was may may i think it was may okay She's um, the one who dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's not going to come. And so that's whenever, he, at some point, Miss uh, Claire, as we found out later, ends up going to the school, mm-hmm. into it, to, I guess, get a sip of water. Um, but um, I think that's... that, Or well, she's not going to get a sip of water, but she's going to go do something. But yeah, that's she went she, to the bathroom. And then on her way back out, right. but, she runs into Kelso. Yeah, but no, that's that's before she even goes into the restroom oh, because it? he's like, "Hey, girl," and she slips into that door, and then oh, she I comes thought back she out. just hid in a random closet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel oh. like she had just finished, and then she just uh, she just like hid in there, and I was like, "What are you doing?" Because then she kind of like peeks out. Yeah. Again, and I was like, "What? I don't know." But she comes back out, and then she yeah, she finishes and writes underneath the fountain. It's like it'll come back later. Um, we don't see at that moment what she does write though. Yeah, all I all I could see was Marion and Claire, mm-hmm. and then that was it. Yeah, and the, I think it was May and Claire. No, um, wasn't it the girls who died? I think she Snape? wrote Marion because that's what was. I wrote the second time as well. Okay, or Rad okay, is what it gotcha. says later. Um, and so. This is what you get for watching a movie on YouTube. And so um, that's whenever she goes right up to, I guess, an entryway exit, um, how you would say, and the little boy pops up in a raincoat, yellow mm-hmm. slicker. And, and we he, had kind of seen that earlier mm-hmm. during those opening scenes that were very mm-hmm. close up that didn't really tell you, it didn't make any sense to you Yeah. at first, but it had a lot of, like, because we saw the cards and the spokes. We saw mm-hmm. the the M it was engraved on, on his bike and then the his raincoat and stuff like that. So we saw kind of the like main things that come into play later. And then mm-hmm. we know that that kind of is a characteristic of Milo's bike. Yeah. Um, and so whenever she starts seeing it later, we know like, oh, fuck, that is Milo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yes, they just all willy nilly follow him, which was so weird to me. Same. And they just got on their bikes and were just like, OK, they and they're, they're like, asking him those questions like, what school do you what, go to? And, and he doesn't even answer. He's just like, mm, dur, dur, dur. Yeah. and then I'm sorry. By the time they get to th- his it's house, dark as fuck. it looked dark. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I was just saying, I was wondering like how long did these kids just like, Fall they can just miles. ride until dark. Like it's nothing. Cause all of them were still just like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Like, sorry, riding multiple miles on a bike is not easy. Essentially. And well, if we're thinking this is 16 years before, I'm assuming the movie takes, the movie was released in 98. So I'm assuming it takes place in 98. So it had to be 83. So I feel like back then, maybe, yeah. I feel like, like back in the day, people let their kids just be out all the time. And like, they wouldn't even come home to like dinner time, oh, supper yeah. time, you know? But I, I meant for like, 
physical activity, like them being oh, able to that's ride true. that. I don't know. Calmly. Kids have a lot of stamina. I guess. Mm -hmm. They were just sitting back, though, like so proper posture and stuff and mm -hmm. not being like <gasps> over mm -hmm. the front like I, I would be. Um, but then also, so I was confused. It was dark, but then it seemed like it was light again. Mm -hmm. I so I don't know if they just like used a random shot and didn't fix that. When they were inside the house, it looked like it was light outside. Yeah. 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 And then uh, even after they parked their probably. bikes, because it was just on the shot of the gynecology clinic where I was yeah. like, oh shit, it's like dark as fuck. And then whenever they were getting off their bikes to go into the house. Gotcha. It looked like it was sunny again. Weren't sunny. I think. I don't think I caught that. I was probably writing notes, but all I can say is um, this film didn't probably have a high budget so i'm <laughs> sure maybe there could have been like a continuance like disruption there like you know continuity yeah. but um, or they just didn't notice but yeah. it, milo's or just bad lighting milo's taking them to a gynecology clinic mm -hmm. according to the sign mm -hmm. and we find out that it is his father dr jeter dr jeter yeah who owns this um but yeah he's this is where I put, like, his voice is really silly. <laughs> it's very silly. I was like, why the fuck is he talking like this? Yeah, I was Because so he's, he's taking them inside, and he's had essentially promised them to show them some jars with things inside of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so we get them coming in. He's like, you know, it's this way, and then, like, takes them into this basically wardrobe-looking thing. Like yeah, a like a little bar. curio cabinet kind of thing. Sure. Uh, for, like, China, probably. Yeah, you know, China, China cabinet. Yeah. Um, but he <laughs> but opens it. Set of China. <laughs> there's babies in jars. Babies in jars. And one of them says, like, jars of apricot jam. Mm -hmm. It, it might have been him. Maybe. I don't know. Someone said that. And I was like, yeah, he said that. These are yeah, babies. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I was just like, why do they have babies in the jars? But okay. And so then that's whenever they're looking at all of them. And he says, well, I pro y'all promised if I showed you the jars, you would come with me. Or Let me do. He, he was like, it's time for your checkup. And yeah. they're like, what? And he said, you promised me if I showed you the jars, you would let me like perform a checkup on you yeah like be your like, doctor oh, what very creepy no yeah and so that's whenever they we all get the pain oh and they're on. all bitches too yeah. because they're all little bitches because he's like which one like he's basically like one of you come with me and they all go and look back at each other until everybody's just looking at may may and then apparently may's just like well okay i guess it's gonna <laughs> be me singled out literally and sorry on the jar on the china cabinet of mm -hmm. babies um the 1953 there one? was an empty jar that said 10 23 53 mm -hmm. and it there even there knowing okay so i had seen this film yes once when i was a kid mm -hmm. horrified me so i didn't watch it again um because clearly even the idea that i had of floor vents not really a thing yeah not really a thing. I There's like, like one little area where he's kind of behind something. And, and he's, he's stabbing her, her from the, I think it was the stairs yeah. in the basement. Yeah. So that is probably what I was thinking of, but my brain morphed it. Into an air vent thing. Uh -huh. That's so, so funny how life works like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like Or certain. maybe it's something else that you saw that yeah. that's from. And you maybe conglomerate, like I probably morph them did together. morph them together. Yeah. I did it have the, still be out there. the bride part right. Yeah. Like, because mm -hmm. I remember them all being dressed up in Brights, bridal gowns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that. When you find the right dress. <laughs> um, but yes, I didn't remember the part about him being an aborted fetus mm -hmm. that. I like a was Frankenstein monster, basically. Brought to life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but even there, I was like, that's his jar. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. To me, I was, I didn't catch that. I thought maybe it was like one of the girls was going to be put in the jar. I don't know. Um, I also didn't know what year it was. I was like, could this be 53? So I was like, interesting. Is he like having a jar ready for one of them? And then I was thinking like, wait, are one of these girls pregnant? I don't know. Yeah, like I was like, whoa, was where's also, this going? I, whenever we went into that room with May mm -hmm. and him. Granted, they're just like, what? 12, 13, 12 year olds probably. Yeah. Yeah. And he put her in stirrups right like yeah. she was in like stirrups mm -hmm. and so like you're gonna get a pap smear or something as i was watching this i was like wait are one of them pregnant yeah mm -hmm. and then i was like oh no is he gonna <laughs> impregnate <laughs> her yeah was my other because the way he started this movie was rated r too oh top. yeah it was very sensual sexual it was yes, weird yeah. and very rapey yeah sorry it was creepy i don't know if that was the correct word to use sorry but it was very yeah. essay yes not a fan mm -hmm. um 
And so, yeah, he ends up basically maze in there. He gets on top of her. He's like cutting around her, essentially. Or no, he checks her with the, because that's later, my bad. He checks her with the stethoscope. And he's like, oh my God, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> and then um, that's whenever he just starts hacking away at her, we're left to assume, because then they're all that's like. his little scalpel. A little scalpel. It's his weapon of choice. They are, um, the girls get up as they're like looking around. And I think it's really Claire's the one who like starts looking at the door and like blood just starts coming from the bottom of it and yeah then, literally she's lost so much blood mm-hmm. that it started pooling and running underneath mm-hmm. the door which is wild and so they end up opening the door right or someone opens something opens the door. Milo, Milo opens, the, opens door. the door and, it's just and like, Claire was down. the first one who yeah. noticed it and so she was the closest to the door so yeah, yeah. she got stabbed mm-hmm. the other girls thankfully I think got it no one else was stabbed physically harmed may died claire was stabbed Mm -hmm. and then the rest obviously were still traumatized traumatized from this in their own way yeah Yeah. um but we have her waking up that yes she's our main character of sorts yeah she is and she was um clearly having having a a dream nightmare and dream sequence that explained everything that we needed to know to set up this movie so it works out perfectly it was nice yeah um and And we kind of get a pan in on her little scar Mm -hmm. on her chest so we are like okay this this is claire Claire, yeah who got stabbed Um, because at that point we still even didn't really have too many names um like when they were little kids you know oh yeah i had Mm -hmm. no clue who was anyone until they i didn't know may's name i thought that was marion um Mm -hmm. with her name possibly being shortened Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then until i realized marion was still alive and then they were like that's may and i was like yeah Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. May is dead. Yeah. Got May it. was a little girl that died. Took and so me a little bit. We're old now, obviously. It's uh, 1998. She's a grown up. And that's whenever we see her like. Talking her, to her fucking fish. Talking to her fish. Which is yeah, like, that's normal. But at first I was like, bitch, who are you talking to? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't see the fish. Yeah. And then she starts like actually talking to the fish. And, and I was like. to him. Ew, yeah. So I that's see. her best friend. Yeah. And so um, we have her. Uh, shows kind of basically her her life um she's a substitute teacher at the school with i guess people who are supposed to be teenagers but they look like fucking they 30 like year adults. olds yeah <laughs> like i was grown full-grown adults that maybe but I, this was a I feel like that's how people in something. 90s that's what people in the 90s look like though in just high full school. adults yeah i feel like because mm. anytime i look at like old school videos of like people in high school i'm like they all look so old i don't know yeah they didn't have as much skincare back then yeah and so we have um, her basically back at home. She's going through her mail and she got an invitation for her friend Ruth, who is getting married back mm-hmm. from her hometown. One of the little girls from her group that was, you know, uh, traumatized by Milo. What a um, fun like way to have your wedding invitation as well. Like it had the newspaper clipping. Uh, the clipping inside of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then with which that clipping is important. It comes, comes back, back into play mm-hmm. later. Um, but. I just was like, oh, that's cute. And it had plane tickets for her, mm-hmm. which I was like, damn, that's, that's real, a real friend. That's a good friend. That's nice. Because then you can't say no as well. Yeah. Um, But also, too, it's just like uh, back. It's you forget because back in the day, people actually used to get like wedding things and all that stuff put in the paper. Like, oh, that's yeah. Crazy to me. Engagement announcements yeah, and all that. And yeah. Stuff. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so. Um, and now it's just like Facebook. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so um, that's whenever she's, you know, basically smiling. She's just like. She it, yells, Claire's get or Ruth's get Ruth's married. To the fish. To the fish. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, at first again, I was like, who's she talking to? Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, it's the fish. The movie transitions pretty fast. It's a pretty short movie. It's only like an hour and a half. Um, mm-hmm. And so. Assuming we, we got the whole movie, right? Yeah. And so we have her then like she's in a cab. She's obviously back in her hometown. She's heading back to someone's house. I think it's the blonde girl's house. Abigail. Abigail. Yes. Abby. And so she ends up like having flowers. She shows up to the door and Abby and Marion come out. They're all in black, which I'm like, this is a really fast turnaround. But anyways, apparently through the confusion, <laughs> Ruth had got into a car accident the evening before yeah. and is, had died and they hadn't been able because as she was approaching i was like they look too sad yeah i was like why same. did they look so i was sad? like oh this is not the right event because then i was like they could have just been into wearing all black mm-hmm. like it like it didn't look like full-on morning clothes it just yeah. looked like kind of your standard 90s all black outfit yeah. you know the black sheer tights <clears throat> under like the like long skirts and Princess your docks. dies dress yeah mm-hmm. and then yeah, they are basically saying, yeah, Ruth passed away and... She dead. 
Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We tried calling you, but you were already on the plane kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, no cell phones, you know, so it's different. Yeah. A little bit harder to get in contact. Yeah. Because she's obviously not home, so she can't answer her house phone. She just had to wait till she got there. Mm -hmm. That is so weird. I'm so glad that we are not in that time period. I was... Okay, this is silly. I read Webtoons as... I'm, I know I mentioned on here before, but l- yesterday while I was dying, I read that I was reading this one that is based in the eighties uh-huh. and, but they kind of look so there's a lot of like eighties fashion in it, mm-hmm. but then there's also like the main character looks like he could still just kind of be modern. Yeah. Um, it's just like clothing that's existed for decades and he's just wearing it. So there's multiple times where I'm like, why don't you just fucking call him? And then, <laughs> then I'm like, you have to oh, remember that it's, it's the, the 80s. 80s. Yeah. <laughs> they can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so different. It, it keeps tripping me up. So like, and there's a lot of times when movies are based in older times older and stuff periods, like that. Yeah. I'm like, what? Why can't you just, just do this? Google it. Do just that, Google do it. Yeah. yeah. Call the person. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, we've become a society. Like I'm so dependent on technology. Like you think about it, like even watching these movies we watch all these movies through streaming mm-hmm. and like if the internet went down and we didn't have access to internet girl i don't have a dvd player a vhs i think my dvd player, player is like, broken yeah but, but anyways. i do have and a I bunch was, of dvds and i was also at the hb the other day and i saw like dvd bin and i was like wow people still just really people buying dvd oh huh. that's me like, i do really oh, at the yeah DVD when that's like the five dollar yeah, uh-huh. dvds yes i'll, I'll still well, buy crazy. them <laughs> and i think like and my initial thought was like man that's crazy just stream it but then i'm thinking like damn you know what those people are really set up because like when the apocalypse happens or like when like if there ever is a time where you can't stream you have mm-hmm. the dvds you know what i mean but anyways i digress and let's get back to milo so <laughs> that's whenever they're all kind of catching up they're getting you know caught up i guess on what on whatever happened and then we have and also um, just reminiscing yeah reminiscing because they're talking about they were childhood friends yeah Yeah. and claire and ruth i suppose are the two who went on to be teachers but Mm -hmm. then claire constantly is kind of underselling herself um she just doesn't have any ounce of confidence not at all really and Mm -hmm. then she's kind of a doormat so that's why at the end whenever she kind of takes it back for herself it's oh, like sure good for you claire well, even that but even the other two fr- it's because like they're on different ends of like the spectrum like because the other two friends definitely seem like cutthroat like just bitches mm-hmm. like as well though yeah marianne was definitely a lesbian yeah. or at least <laughs> by lesbian and then abby was like that very like just i felt like mean girl yes like rich mean girl yeah yeah um but i digress the they're catching up but they're basically saying as well how um ruth passed away and she had all these students that really cared for her and it would be a good idea for claire to take over her classroom which, which was i was so like what odd. that doesn't sound like a good idea to me but okay no i was like claire's clearly traumatized of mm-hmm. this place why i mean she had to leave due to her trauma yeah well the other two friends were also very insensitive the whole time so they also didn't ever really see things from her perspective so no i don't think they really had like her best interest no they just thought also i just i'm sorry who are you to fill a job position in the school Mm -hmm. neither of you are on the school board yeah or have this power to be like you should just do this Mm -hmm. and then i mean somehow miraculously she does get the job it's the movie i know but it's like what like you guys don't have any say because <laughs> she's like there the next day i know it's a like, small okay. town and but they're like you're the teacher yeah and she's like okay then yeah. he's like y'all didn't even like try to... and he's like sh- and he told her too he was like you were more than qualified and i was like with what <laughs> with what she's a sub she was subbing <laughs> but, i'm sorry to all the or maybe she did have her credentials there. and she was just subbing because she couldn't handle teaching full-time but that also just shows you maybe you shouldn't be a especially teacher especially in your time. hometown yeah with little kids and so she she's at the school she's meeting with the principal they are speaking they're talking she is basically getting the job um that's whenever they're walking around the halls he's kind of giving her the sh- tour you know lay of, as the land. lay of the land they see mr kelso and she's like wow mr kelso is still here and he makes that joke of like yeah i think he'll be here till he polishes the school down to its foundation yeah just um, nothing left which was mm-hmm. for how um like attentive Kelso, do- Mr. Kelso, Dr. Kelso was to the floors and stuff. The outside of that school was busted. Yeah. That motherfucker needed a paint job yeah. so badly. Yeah. The whole like front of it was just crumbling. Yeah. And, but 
here's Mr. Kelso just buffing the floors till forever. <laughs> it's irony. The floors right? are nice and shiny, but it's the ironic. outside of the school's falling apart. <laughs> I'm sure they're underfunded. And then I could only imagine maybe even two. Because it doesn't seem like the movie had like a big budget. Yeah. They had to find a school that like maybe it wasn't even a school anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Probably. Like in real life. <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah. But empty. they were just using it for the film. You yeah. Know? Very possible. Um, But we have her uh, essentially um, being, oh, she goes and looks in the hallway. That's right. And she looks under the water fountain. And that's when we get to see as well that she had written that Marianne and uh, Claire, Claire are, are rad. rad. Um, so, and I'm like, how the hell is that still there? Yeah. 16 years later. That I doesn't was, make sense. Kelso's too attentive to everything yeah. that, except for the outside and it was like of the school. Pencil. Yeah. And then I know it was written like under the water fountain. So unless you're, like a Does child the and like water get back there too. I, I would know. think so. I don't really know how water fountains I operate. I don't stare at them long enough. Mm. Um. But yeah, but yeah. So anyways, that's still there, but it's also just a cute little nod back to like, I guess when she was a child. So it's mm-hmm. nostalgic. Um, but that's whenever we get to the classroom, she's with her children. These and little kids are to savage. Yeah, they are. Um, and then I didn't know if you noticed, but there's Mila Kunis mm-hmm. and she's not listed in the film. She's uncredited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Little Miss Kunis, and she looks the exact same, talks the exact same. She does, yes. Yeah, and I, she had to be like what ten or something there. Yeah, yeah, something. She, but, but I mean, I probably, knew immediately when I saw her. I was like, what the fuck? That's Mila Kunis. Yeah, exactly yeah. same. I was Kunis. just like, oh, I know her. Yeah, um, don't remember her being in this. But. Yeah, so we get a little, uh, basically, an introduction to out of all the kids because she has all the students. We only really talked to her, Mila, which I forget her name in the court yes room setting kendra. classroom setting kendra and then uh, evan evan who is a little weird boy yes and the kids are chatting with her it kind of almost seems pretty too smooth like they're she's kind of being she's basically saying i know how much y'all loved ruth so i'm not going to replace her i won't even try i'm just going to do my own thing and it, it seems the whole talk to me her inflection a was weird huh. um b the whole talk just seemed a little too mature for these kids oh yeah for sure all of it and It was just, it was like she had prepared this speech and stuff and the kids were feeding the exact lines back. It was just very weird. Mm -hmm. I could see that. uh, I was just like, what? What? I was also thinking that as well. I was like, these aren't like middle schoolers even. They're not even. Yeah. These are elementary school kids and you're sitting here talking like just very plainly about death and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's not something that a lot of kids are have come to term with yet they As don't even fully to. understand it the concept. at that time i mean i know they had just lost their teacher but that's still a little young and for them to half the stuff she was saying to them i don't even remember what all it was but half the stuff she was saying to them was just very out of yeah. their that's what like, should have been out of their age even like range. my my dad's mom my grandma died um 2001 so i had to be seven six or seven and i still like i remember even back then like i didn't like i knew what was happening but I think about that time period as well, and I'm just like, it didn't. I just remember seeing everybody sad, you know. Yeah. I'm like, wow, everybody's sad. This is I should be sad, but I don't really feel that sad. But mm-hmm. like, okay. And she's, same when my great dead. grandma okay, I guess died. She's not here anymore. It was yeah. just like, okay. I remember going to the funeral and just like watching my mom cry, watching everyone cry, mm-hmm. and was just kind of like, okay. Yeah, that's weird. It's and weird. I was like, should I cry? <laughs> like, do, do I need to? Okay, let's, you know, lick your finger, put some spit mm. on the outside of your eye to make it look oh, like yeah. you've been crying. I think that was like my pretty much most closest dealing with death in life. That early anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I don't, can't remember anything other before that. But yeah. Um, and so I just remember not really feeling much of anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, we weren't that close. She lived in like states away. So I didn't see her that often. But still, I just remember even like death itself, like wasn't a fully realized concept yeah. for me at that age. Like, didn't my understand mind, yeah. that she was like, had spent time on this earth and then now was gone. Poof. And never to just, return. Like, yeah, forever. will never not be here again. Yeah, that's crazy. You don't realize <gasps> just how final it and is. And now, like as an adult, I'd be laying up in bed sometimes. I'm like thinking, like, damn, one of these days, I'm like literally not gonna be here anymore. Yeah, I hate it. And I, then I like start spiraling. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I can't. I used to have like very. Once I did understand death, it was a yeah. debilitating. I don't even like, think that it's like that I'm afraid to die or like I'm afraid of death, but more so just the thought of like, like, like there will be no more like 
going to the store, like having fun with friends, like no more doing this and no more doing that. Like what? Like yeah. in this sense, you know, I'm like, that's weird. That is so weird. We're I'm gonna- just afraid that there will be nothing and mm-hmm. I'll just float in black. Well, but it's the I thing of like, that. uh, you listen, it's like, how do you, do you remember the feeling you felt before you were alive? No. So therefore it would be the same thing after. Yeah, I know, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing. Not, okay. not a fan. <laughs> um, and so anyways, ah. getting back to these children, they're talking all that. We're moving on. She's moving in. She's she got her fish says, delivered. I think I'll stay. Yeah. yeah. I, whenever she pulled the fucking fish out of a box, I was like, I'm sorry. How did that happen? Did you just mail your fucking she fish? <laughs> Rather I don't know than how that driving it up with you? Because I don't feel like that would be no survivable but it because did. it was just in a plastic Unless bag it was a special order special care yeah special fragile. service i don't know it could have been rogue con 23 that's right it is here it's not back it's here it's the first one join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators passionate fans and industry experts it is all happening in downtown waco across multiple venues january 20th through the 22nd of 2023 now if you want to go you got to get tickets and tickets are on sale at roguecon 23.com that's roguecon r-o-g-u-e-c-o-n 23.com be there i'm gonna be there everybody's gonna be there let's go and so she's getting moved in everything's getting situated and at that point we do see that someone is watching her through her blinds in her house whenever she i think she's talking to the fish at one point uh, um, oh you, yes that's right that? mm-hmm. yeah and um creepy. which is creepy milo for sure um because you hear his little like <laughs> yeah <laughs> weird breathing <laughs> yeah as he's watching her um and that was only writing i was like her outfits yeah. are real cute Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I was writing that here, and, that, and then also that she looks a little bit like Jennifer Love Hewitt from. I kept some thinking shots. that Jennifer I was Love. Like, is this mi- Jennifer well, Love Hewitt? She looks like a mix of Jennifer Love Hewitt and then the girl from Labyrinth with David Bowie. I can't remember her name. Her name's like Jennifer something, but look that up. Look. Um, and so she looks like her, and if you look it up, you'll be like, oh wow, she does. And so she does say to the little fish, "You have a new home." And we find out that the next day she has taken the fish to the classroom at school. Um, the little kids are looking at her. Evan's looking at her and little Mila Kunis is as well. And she's like, um, he's like the fish thinks. And she's like, well, at least he has an excuse. Jennifer to Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. She looks like her. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Like. Yeah. Young her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, but even like older her, like look at the older version of her and she looks more like her. Mm. Um, like could be an, a sister, like almost. Related and something. Related cousin something. And so we have them all at school again, basically. We have her talking to the kids. At this point, she's trying to do a little, like, uh, spelling lesson with them. But she ends up looking outside of the window. And she sees Milo on his bike. And she hears the little, you know, card in the spokes going, that familiar sound. And she is pretty much in a trance as she's watching him from across the she way. She literally misses the whole rest the of the whole period. period. Yeah, <laughs> because just like, she's just, I, God knows how long she was there. Probably an hour just standing there. And the bell rings. And then it's recess time. And yeah. that's when ever like even evan just comes and like tugs on her and it's like ma'am ma'am it's just recess it's time to go yeah and then mila kumis is like you're supposed to let us know when it's okay to go yeah and then does this whole like turn around like (laughs) it was a very like sassy sassy moment yeah yeah i also don't i mean i know they're kids and they're probably just like what the hell's going on but i feel like i would have been like miss miss yeah miss i would have <laughs> like, too like are you okay like what's going on she do i need to be scared obviously staring at something for a long time yeah and so especially like see if she had that conversation with them mm-hmm. and they were mature enough to hear it then they should have been mature enough to be like miss are you okay like what's going on mm-hmm. instead of just sitting there like yeah I don't know. Movie magic, though. And That's so true. she ends up going outside. It's recess. She's watching Evan go and talk or run off to Milo. And yeah, she I asked, was like, oh, no, poor baby. Don't yeah. go to him. She asked Mr. Kelso, do you see that kid, that boy? And he's like, like, basically, like, I mean, they're all out here. What do you mean? <laughs> there's like, a lot of kids. There's a lot of kids out here. I hate them all. <laughs> 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 Very much that vibe. They're all here. And so um, they and end up all coming back, back inside. Though, yeah. Milo's gone. Yeah, that's true. Like he is just it's he's seemingly vanished. Mm-hmm. This movie a lot makes you think that, oh, shit, is he a ghost? She's going crazy. There was well. multiple times where I thought, oh, God, Milo's a ghost. And then then I thought, OK, no, Evan is the killer mm-hmm. and Evan mm-hmm. is in on it. 
I could see that like he's being used by him mm -hmm. as a conduit, as like, like kind of the possessed. physical vessel. Yeah. yeah. And or at least being, you know, and manipulated. A pawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I could see that. Then they really went with I mean the idea of what they went with was like maybe not my favorite. I would have kind of almost it's not really realistic. Him at be all. a ghost. Yeah, because yeah, that even that's more realistic than what they gave us. <laughs> then yes. Uh, yeah. But anyways, um, we'll get we'll, we'll get, get to there. It. So we have them getting back into class and the little kids are passing like a little note almost in the most in obvious like, way, not indiscreet way possible. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, because they're fucking not sneaky at second all. grade. Yeah. So they pass the note. It gets all the way to Millie Kunis's character. And that's whenever Miss Claire is like, what is that? And then she's like, it's you. And, and she was, gives her a picture of her. I was like, ew. When she was a child. It was creepy. And it said on the back, Milo and Claire Equals, equals love. love. Milo plus Claire equals love. Yeah. And so she's kind of freaking out on the kids a little bit, just being like, where did you get this from? And then she asks Evan, like, where did you get this from? And he's like, um, it was, I don't even remember what he said. I don't either. It, it was, was either he's like, like, I just found it, found I swear. It. Oh, he found it out where he was at the yeah. recess. That's right. Um, he was like, I just found it. And so that's whenever... <clears throat> She's like, and Evan's fucking lying. Cool. Yeah, he is. She kind of lets it, whatever, slide, I guess. And that's whenever she, uh, we get another shot of her talking with the principal outside of the school, and she's really out of it. She's not paying attention to their conversation at all. And he's even picking up on it. He's like, "Are you okay?" He's yeah. Ask her multiple times, and she tries to explain that if it seems that she's out of it, it's because she just really cares, and this place used to be traumatizing for her, which and doesn't make any sense to me. And but even the, even he is like, um, the kids don't even want to be here. And if you don't want to be here, that's probably not good. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to make them want to be here anymore. Yeah. And while this is happening, we're getting this like shot of a little boy in a gray hoodie, mm -hmm. which apparently Milo has worn in other times, not his raincoat. Mm. And so she, he's like kind of stops at the end of the stairs and then real fucking weird, like just. Turns back turns around like he forgot something and runs back at them. Mm -hmm. But he like stood there for way too long that I was like, that is creepy. Yeah. Um, also, I forgot about lima beans. The principal said mm -hmm. something about lima beans and like they don't want to eat their lima beans. And I was like, whoa, I've never had I a forgot lima people bean. eat lima beans. I remember growing one. them yeah. on a windowsill, like yeah. in a plastic in a, bag mm, and a paper towel yeah. inside of the plastic bag. Yeah, I remember and then that it would sprout and grow tall. I've had a, a lima flower. bean though. They're um, not. I don't remember them being like too they're terrible. They're white, right? Yeah, like a white, pale green. I don't know. Anyways, that oh. was just, he was talking about that. And I was like, damn, mm -hmm. was that just like a, they made I feel kids like that in used the to 90s be, and yeah, then I now they don't. Yeah, I feel like that don't. used to be probably like a big <laughs> school food thing. Um, and so she is basically, at this point, you get like this notion of that, man, is she, is she losing her mind? Um, because then she's in her car and she's about to drive off of the, like, the property of the school and she sees him in his little yellow raincoat again and he like is on his bike and goes whooshes right past her and so right in front of the yeah, car and we have Mr. Kelso is like you're supposed to want to hit them not, not actually, actually hit do them it. Yeah. and so and at that moment too mm -hmm. I was like that was where I was like Milo caused the accident oh yeah and then because she, even she asks yeah. she was like well where did Ruth's accident happen he was like well it was really just a few blocks down from here I think he and literally then, said like half a block away yeah he was yeah. like it was very close and so at that point I was like oh, okay yeah Milo did this and then the she still goes and follows him yeah she sees I him and she follows him like what yeah what the I fuck are you doing, girl? I wouldn't understand why she would do that either, but she's also and like not the most sane person. No, right now. she's she's not very smart. Um, yeah. And then she's like straight up like Tokyo drifting through mm -hmm. the fucking yeah. residential neighborhood. Because she ends up going on like a, what are those called? Like almost like a roundabout a cul -de area, cul-de-sac. And yeah. she almost hits a little girl. And even the mom comes up and is like, there are children out here. You need to be careful. Go away. Exactly. Like, yeah. And the little girl walked out in the street because she saw Milo. Yeah. She was true. kind of looking after him because he, like he her. went like nur, 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 really fast around the corner and mm -hmm. then. Claire comes around in the corner way too fucking fast and little girl's already in the road almost gets hit. Mm -hmm. But then also like little girl should have looked both ways, but whatever. Uh -uh. And so everyone's at fault. So we have her um, basically talking to her friend about Milo, which is Miss Abby. Yeah, she um, she's at her house. Time. They're kind of, I guess, chatting. She's telling her what, how she feels about it. She's saying that she thinks that 
Milo also killed Ruth and Mabby's like, do you mean that little boy who drowned? Basically, I feel like Abby and both Marion had at this point um, very much like buried this trauma to where mm-hmm. it was like almost like not even real for them. <laughs> and she, well, and she, I put, damn, encouraging our friends to bury their trauma. Yeah. She oh, literally mm-hmm. is encouraging her to just forget about it. Yes. Yeah. Like, and don't think about it. She was saying it couldn't be him because he's dead. And then she was like, well, we don't know. He's dead. And they said he drowned. He's saying he vanished, which is like. Not proof. No, he didn't because they found the body. The body. Yeah. Which so we learn later. I was just like, okay, that didn't line up. But, um, and then she said, if he was still alive, he would be like six, six and drool on himself. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Yeah. Just obnoxiously not large. To... He wouldn't be a little kid. Yeah. And wouldn't be able to take care of himself. And so that's whenever we have her um, looking for pictures and proof of Milo. Um, Claire is doing this because she Which, like wants. She's like again. I was like, why? Remember, why would you want to see a picture of him? All this up. Yeah. I. D- I mean, if if I was <laughs> brutally attacked as she was, I don't. I wouldn't. I'm sorry. I would. I would want to bury my trauma. <laughs> that, we're not going to come to terms yeah, with that. No. We're not, no. Bury that shit away. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. <laughs> It's and so we have them then turning to a uh, video footage of May's birthday from one of her birthdays from back in the day before she passed away. And you know, Miss Claire is like, I don't remember this. And they're like, It's May's birthday party. And they're like, Oh, yeah. And then at that point, we do have Milo showing up outside of the house getting filmed. Um, and he's just being very weird as well. And I'm also thinking, like, Who's filming this? As like all these little kids go outside yeah. to some boy who's not invited to this party. I guess a parent and, but, but then I, I don't know. Yeah. And so anyways, they're all there out there talking to little Milo. Um, and this is when he's in the gray hoodie. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, just pretty weird footage. I would say like they set it up already to make him seem like, what are they doing? Cause they're just going out there and it looks like he's almost offering something. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you can't just tell what. what it is. It's very almost like, Sinisterish, but the yes. age, like the little kids and the footage. Definitely. Old school back in the That's day. That's what I immediately thought. I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, it's one of the kids." Someone, <laughs> yeah. And so we're um, then she's talking to her friend um, about how, or Abby's telling her, the kids are just trying to give you like a hard time. Like you just need to let them warm up to you, essentially, because she's been t- telling her about like what had happened at school because they had that photo of her, and she's like, they. Abby is basically saying our what happened to our ourselves our trauma is not a secret to the sound everybody knows about everybody it knows. so they're just playing a prank on you it's probably some parents you know who told them too much and mm-hmm. stuff like that and they're just being mean which mm-hmm. again I feel like they're maybe a little too young to I mean kids are mean and savage and stuff like yeah. that but I feel like it was far enough removed at that point too that maybe they wouldn't really talk about it yeah but, but of course I mean if Milo is directly speaking with Evan he's letting him know so essentially, um, Blondie tells her, don't worry about it. Please sleep well tonight and don't talk about this ever again. Um, but then Miss Claire leaves. And at this point, I'm like, Blondie's dead. Miss yeah. Abby's about to die. She's getting ready for night. She's got putting she's got on her, her cream whole and stuff. She's doing that. And then that's whenever. She continues watching she, old films. Mm-hmm, she's continuing to watch them. And she sees Milo um, even popping up in another film, right? And yeah, that's whenever he's he, popping up again. And more. I think that that's this, like one of these photos here almost. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he ends up like, I thought I was like, damn, did he just come through the screen? Yeah. <laughs> Cause it was, he just, he kind of like popped up in the reel and then he started S- stabbing then he her. Came through the scalpel. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe he was like behind the projector and then just like, was Possibly. like hiding, just yeah. waiting, and then For was the like, right moment. <laughs> and it was like him on screen, and then was him in real life. But yeah, he ends up just like uh, killing her essentially. And this scene was Brut- so, yeah. I-, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Because they're not really showing much, and it's just like dice, dice, stab, stab, and then like just blood starts coming out of her, and she's just like writhing around, like and ah! screaming, yeah, yeah. And it's it's just kind of shifting camera angles mm-hmm. rather quickly, it's not showing you much without of showing, yeah, much. Mm-hmm. And so you're just kind of getting like her feet on the carpet, like moving around, and then you're seeing her face like really close up, but you're not like seeing her get stabbed. It's very like se. psycho, like or yeah. like you know the first uh, Friday the Thirteenth, and they're like about to get hacked, and then it like cuts away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I I put the f- like it was just an overall funny scene. The music mm-hmm. that was happening, her screams. I was and like, stuff. dang, she's just getting cut up. Yeah, she was very dead. So we then have um, Miss Claire getting woken by cops at her door because they're coming to question her because apparently the neighbors saw her as the last person that Miss 
uh, Abby's, Abby's house, house and Abby is now missing and it She's doesn't look gone. good because the house is like obviously bloodied up where yeah. she was killed. Yeah. They're like based on what was left. It doesn't look promising. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of blood. Nobody though. And after or through this conversation with the cops, the cops, the main guy, um, starts like insinuating to like her like almost he for sure thinks she's like a suspect yeah he's like you were the last one to see her and she's dead and he's like were y'all fighting did y'all have an argument um did you know anybody who did not like her and she's just basically being like no we were friends like mm-hmm. i wouldn't kill her yeah um but he, he doesn't was, believe her obviously yeah he was being very very aggressive mm-hmm. towards her really because i was like she's like a frail little m- m- girl like she's yeah. gonna do much um at this point, I did note, too, that her acting was not the best No, here. Not, well, there's um, certain moments and, throughout the movie. Yeah. yeah. This was one of them where I was like, oh, okay, this is not my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, she also, in that moment, made the decision not to tell them about Milo. No, no, and she did And the fact, like, that, you know, they were all attacked. I felt, I feel like in that again. moment, that would have been the correct thing to do. Well, especially, especially later when we he's like, you never told us about this. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not even saying like, I think it's Milo, but just saying like, you know, we're very close together. We went through this traumatic thing together. Mm-hmm. We lost a friend. I'm not here to hurt any of my other friends. We just lost another. Like, I don't think she's that great at communication. Kayla. No, no. She's yeah. been traumatized and I feel like she's been stunting, stunted in growth. So she doesn't she did not have the capability to be like explaining all this i think she still is also trying to process the fact that her friends are dying and she's seeing this little kid who's supposed to be dead she's just really stupid (laughs) i'm sorry because i feel like most people in that moment i feel like if the cops were coming to question me and i feel like most people they would be like here's all the information this is all i fucking i've lied to the cops many of times i don't get well not (laughs) <laughs> like but in with a yeah, friend dying I, I, with I, one of uh, like yeah. who you actually cared about if it's not i mean given the it's circumstances true. yes depending but if like my friend like if you were dead yeah and they came questioning me saying like you were the last person to see him leaving rogue media network studios like <laughs> i would be um yeah you know i would but tell I mean, also all the information too, i think even at this point she understands i, I mean I mean, she understands. My friend yes, was killed bizarre. by a ghost that I think is killing yeah. us. Like, well, but I would say, like, I feel, I don't. It could have been a copycat. Mm-hmm. It could have been someone like targeting them, mm-hmm. and so those are all like very logical things Leads that could happen. That they could have worked with. Yes, yeah. and then again, eliminates her as a suspect mm-hmm. because well, the moment you hide shit like that, and you you're not guilty. telling, yeah, because you then you're basically changing shady. your story, yeah. and that's not good. Um, I just she didn't she didn't think things she's a very dull <laughs> character lead and so she ends up then meeting with her friend Marion she's explaining to Marion like I think that this is what this is basically a re this is a remake of what she went with Abby uh, but Marion's even but a even little bit harsh. more blunt and harsher and just she was like, like Milo Jeter yeah you're saying Milo Jeter he's did dead. this yeah mm-hmm <laughs> And she's, you know, trying to tell her, like, you don't, if you care about your job, if you care about these kids, if you care about your life, you will not tell anybody about this. And you will just, like, keep on living your life, ignore it. Our friend's dead. What can we do? That's just, it is she what was, it is. And she basically is like, you sound crazy. Like, yeah. you're acting crazy. And I was like, well, no fucking shit she yeah. is. She was stabbed and all this shit's coming back up now. Like, yeah, you'd be a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. But. I don't like I would feel comfortable. Yeah. Telling that to my friends, too. And I would be like, look, no, I already told it to the police. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like she lets a lot of the environment around her sway her a lot because she also tells her, like, I think he killed a strong character. Like we've mentioned already so far, which she does. And that's I feel also I mean, it adds to the story arc as well. It adds to her character development, as like you say, from like when at the beginning, like how she does end up like retaking basically her whatever it is you know yeah reclaiming her time um and so we have her having this whole conversation with marion and it doesn't really it's not productive at all and it just basically makes her feel more crazy and marion's just a judgmental bitch and then we yeah she's really she's like do not tell the soul and then this. we cut to her being the next day uh, going to school and she gets freaked out because Evan comes to school on a bike dressed up like Milo. While she's and so she's sitting there. She had already stopped at the bike racks because mm-hmm. she noticed a bike that looked oddly similar to Milo's. And then 
Not even that. It was Milo's bike. Mm-hmm. The M was on it. The M that we got the flash at the beginning. I believe there were cards in the spoke as well. Yeah. And it, it very clearly looked like the bike he rode because it had one of those like flat extra seats that kind of came off the back mm-hmm. too. And then, yeah, out of nowhere. And this was like, that would creep me out. Mm-hmm. He was like. <laughs> because he just. Right in front up. of yeah. her. But that's kids. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think I would. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. He just was being a little dick. And yeah. Well, I mean, he is because he's getting Milo is also manipulating him at this mm-hmm. point because he turns around because even later when she's like, you need to stop talking to him. And he's like, who? Like he tries to pretend like he doesn't even know what she's talking about. Yeah. He is obviously being like he's being used by Milo to make her feel more crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Which and I mean, yeah, we get the conversation from them later saying like the raincoat really slick or like the slicker really freaked her out mm-hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. But it's, he turns around once he like slams his way into the bike rack and he just says, hop on sugar. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and she's Ugh. like, don't talk to me like that. It's yeah. so gross. Which and is what Milo said to her whenever he, we had that first interaction with her in that entryway. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I've got my own bike. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. When she was a little girl. But um, we do have them, like, she kind of is, has a little like moment. Of course, it looks like she's like, she's really freaked out you know um but then we do have it going to her getting into the classroom and i I was like is it april fool's day because the the kids are pulling pranks on her there's a frog in her desk which was so essentially supposed to have been put there before they all got there very different from how they were treating her just at the beginning literally the day before they were being really nice to her yeah and now it's like we're gonna laugh at you yeah Yeah. now they're they're being dicks they uh, well i think they put the frog in her desk as she was approaching like someone ran off but they're the stick figure of her on the board was apparently there before they got there they say yes and i don't think it was i think evan did it yeah because obviously and it's so it's not just any stick figure it's a stick figure (laughs) with rather large boobies Mm -hmm. drawn down that were like flat down to her waist yeah Yeah. (laughs) i was like oh they're not doing much um which i mean she had real tight boobies so yeah i don't know but it was just very weird it's supposed to mock her it was supposed to belittle her you know um and so that's whenever she is basically freaking out on evan because she's like why did you do this who did this whatever she's whatever like, i know you know who did this yeah um and, and like, so he's there when we got here she ends up calling mr kelso and he comes in and she's trying to like you know can you please just take care of this can you do something and he's just like well i can't lock the kids out i can't because or i can't she was like you need to keep doors locked or something like this and he's like well i can't lock doors because yeah. kids need to come in and like you know this he was like it this, doesn't make much sense miss to keep kids locked out of the school cool. yeah and then also too he's just like kids will be kids basically and so she's just like can you just do something to cover this up and he's like like a map? map and he just pulls down the map Sassy and covers this up. yeah uh but also like he could have got that <laughs> off yeah um. <laughs> and so, but also she could have as well yeah uh, probably. it looked like it was just chalk <laughs> Yeah, right like and it was so just, she, she could have just like wiped it off yeah, yeah. i but, don't she had her little eraser there and i mm-hmm. guess for whatever reason it wasn't working but um, at this point it's Reese's again and um oh i think even before that my bad she yeah. uh, sees milo talking to evan or we see milo talking we, to evan. yeah we yeah. see milo talking to evan and he's basically saying like that what i said earlier with the raincoat scaring her mm-hmm. and stuff like that and then we see kind of a like, I think it's kind of happening in between, too. Milo hands him something, mm-hmm. and then it falls down, like, into his hand, and Milo was gone. And so, at that point, it really made Milo look like a ghost. Mm-hmm. Because I, I put, oh, so Milo's a ghost right yeah. there. Because the way they shot that. It, he was, was there and then not there. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, you're still seeing the thing that he was transferring him to him fall down. Mm-hmm. And so, unless this kid has, like, superhuman speed, too. I'm not entirely sure yeah. what that uh, thought was there. I also didn't get it either because with the explanation later, it's like, oh, he's just, he's real. So, but does he, is he a mutant? Because does he have like super speed? Because how, yeah. how did that happen? Because he, he does have super Can strength. Can he teleport? Yeah. 
but he does not have super speed. That was um, not one of the things that was listed. And so um, we have it just recess time again. And Miss Claire asks Mr. Kelso to go to recess with her. Like, I guess because she doesn't want to be alone. She wants also probably if something were to happen or she's to see Milo, she wants to be like, do you see him? You know, proof, I guess. Yeah. But um, after this recess session, they end up coming back inside. And I think that's whenever she sees Milo inside the classroom or she walks in. And I, I it was it happened really fast. And I was taking notes. And I felt at all she, of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, we're fighting Milo in the classroom but yeah she was essentially just having like a freak out moment right um so evan was already inside the classroom we mm-hmm. see evan in there and at, well we see a kid in a raincoat walking down the hallway and she was like evan and i was like damn evan's like fucking with her hardcore kind of thing and then i was like oh wait shit was that milo because he was and already then, in the classroom well he wasn't i don't think he was in it because she gets locked out of the classroom and that's when he attacks her mm, gotcha. and so He turns around. He was like walking to the classroom. Evan was in the classroom. Evan was for sure in there. And then he turns around. He says, don't you have a kiss for an old friend? And which is gross. And then that's when the door closes and shuts and she's locked out of the classroom and they're having the fight. And Evan has a a cigar. I saw that. Yeah. In the school. I don't know. Which I was just like, what? I thought maybe is that what he passed him? Milo passed him. Maybe, yeah. Because I don't know where else he would have gotten it. It was from. just very odd. But yes, she's getting attacked. And I think she was actually getting attacked by Milo. But mm-hmm. then I think he flee, like, fled Went the away scene fast again. before other people got there to, to make it seem like she was crazy. And she just passed out as well. Yeah. And yeah. then the kids were freaked out because, you know, the door is getting shut. And then they just see their teacher screaming and flailing on the other side, having just lost another teacher. You know, they're probably like oh is she gonna die too now like yeah i don't know and so it was a little like what damn um and then she comes yeah. to you in the nurse's office and with then, a little another little kid and they have like the little thermometers underneath their tongues and we have marion come to pick her up and she's smoking a cigarette and the lady comes up to her and she's like miss this is a grammar school you can't smoke in here and she was like oh good thing we're leaving yeah and mm-hmm. just like blows it in her face damn um she's savage yeah she really is and so they're in the car they're driving off and that's whenever uh miss claire is going on even more about the whole you know well milo wanted this to happen he's a clever boy he wants me to probably look like i'm ill i was like milo's gaslighting her yeah and at this point even uh, marion is just like um i you know what strike that i know i told you not to tell anybody but i think you should tell somebody and she's like who and she's like a, a doctor, doctor. <laughs> you and need I'm gonna therapy take you there right, right now. now and this is so stupid too because then claire is just like okay yeah i'll tell you where to go and she like takes her back to where they were little kids and i don't know how marion didn't like realize like this oh is where you're we're going this is where we're going of yeah because she's just like before when, they pulled up because they the literally house. even get out and it's like Oh, you got to be kidding me. This is not cool. She's telling her. And I'm the just moment like, because the sign is at the start of the driveway. Yeah. So she so should have known. Or she I should have said like, nope, actually, I'm not going to turn in there. Yeah. That's a bad fucking idea. But they end up going. She gets out with her and they end up going into the house. Yeah. And like, oh, God, it just didn't make any sense. And she was but like, I need yeah. to ask Dr. Jeter, Jeter. Milo's mm-hmm. dad, about what. It's going like on. what the hell is going on? See if he knows anything, and then of course they do the age old dumbass fucking thing of just walking into the house because no one answered. Yeah, they knocked, but then they were just like, "Oh, door's open." Going. Yeah, let me walk in. I mean, I guess it is a doctor's clinic, mm-hmm. per se, but I don't think he was still practicing. Yeah, no, because his practice was ruined after all the stuff with Milo. Yeah, so I don't know. But they just, anyways, they but walk they're gonna in. trespass because it's a horror movie, and so they end up going in and they make their way to the same china cabinet that they'd seen before. But there's no jars in it this time, and I Which, think even then, before that they see that like little weird file cabinet um, yeah. that's in the house. Mm-hmm. And there's the empty like spot of dust as if like they had just been moved or mm-hmm. something too. Um, and she she turns back to Marion and she said. The jars. Do you remember the jars? And I was yeah. like, bitch, oh, fucking of course she does. She was traumatized too. Like she yeah. was there yeah. that day. Of course she remembers the fucking jars. That's the whole reason y'all were in this situation. Yeah. But I, Claire has reason to ask her that though, because Marion's been treating this as if like shit isn't real. Like shit didn't happen when they were little kids. True. Her delivery did not give that that was the reason she was asking that. Mm-hmm. Though her delivery just felt like 
oh my god the jars do yeah. you remember them and it's like bitch that is a rhetorical question <laughs> <laughs> at this point point. and so they're um going through it um basically they get separated because um miss claire is just persistent and she wants to figure out even more and Marion is just like I'm out of here but as soon as she like goes through like to another room she ends up running into Dr. Jeter and he's very like has a very looming presence yeah which is like Ooh. scary and so and she's just like, right Ooh. before that is when they mentioned do you think Dr. Jeter performed abortions oh he was an abortion doctor yeah, yeah. And, and so, so then it was like yeah eh. and so I'm like oh this is Dr. Jeter so they he ends up um going they go into the room wherever where Claire is because he's like, your friend is very concerned for you. She thinks you've lost it. You need to get out of here. Like, and she's telling him like, please, you need to help me. Milo has been attacking my friends. And he's like, my Milo, my, my son. And then he's like, you know what? Follow me if you want to see Milo. Um, and so, um, he ends up like leading them outside as they're talking and having more communication, like exposition on like what's happening. And he felt, he felt very resentful. Mm -hmm. With everything he was saying, he says, like, Milo, basically, what this ruined his life, like, the doctor, he Mm -hmm. was saying, it ruined his life, ruined his practice, like, how do you feel about people, like, how do you think I felt with having all these people just gawking at me, knowing that my son did this and stuff, which is, like, okay, but then also, it felt very, I feel like you wouldn't think that about your son that was dead. Yeah. Regardless, I mean, it's still your son something horrible happened but then i feel like a lot of the times if there is some sort of parental bond most of the time they're going to be like but that was still my kid yeah and so it didn't feel that to me the way he was speaking about milo didn't feel like milo was actually dead yeah for sure because he wasn't he wasn't yeah yeah. and he was alluding to and also uh, dr jeter is not like He's a villain. Yes, yeah. Because <laughs> essentially is a very later bad on we figure out too. like he is and I mean that has to make sense because who brings back an aborted fetus? Yeah. Like, you know. So yeah, there's a whole lot of crazy going on there. He was a yes, ba- crazy but gets crazy. We've got a Dr. Frankenstein mm-hmm. situation. And so he's just not having it. He ends up taking them outside to what is supposed to be quote unquote, you know A little uh, tiny wooden cross. Uh, uh what's his Milo's grave. Yes. And they said they found him five weeks later, blue, bloated, bloated. putrified. And yeah. he was like, <laughs> he asked her, do you want me to get you the shovel? So and it was like, him up. Yeah. damn, okay. <laughs> he, but I mean, I've seen in other movies too, uh, parents act like that whenever people are like talking about their DC show. Yeah. And like people are very like, well, you know, very offensive, very def- defensive. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? definitely. Um, but and it feels also like- he is a red herring, like, and this is all a red herring because he knows exactly what they're fucking talking about. Yeah. He knows is that this like, dude oh, is still damn, awake. Milo's yeah. not being very yeah. sneaky. Like he's very been much so. seen. Like, we talked about his damn. And yeah. so, um, and maybe they were planning this all together. And so they end up having, or they end up well, leaving. He, yeah, I feel like they were because the doctor yeah. even says like, you know, it is y'all's fault that this happened to yeah. Milo basically and was like no, or he blames Claire not really a lot. yeah yeah um and so they end up um leaving um and as they're leaving it's like raining outside it's nighttime and we have a little boy on a yellow in a re- yellow raincoat and he's on the bike and this is like they Marian both see them to miss him and so she's like i fucking know you saw him yeah claire is like i know you saw him don't tell me you didn't like and she's and just like it's some regular kid on a on yeah a bike and i was like marion believe like- the fucking girl come on <laughs> what is wrong with you yeah. And so Jesus. she ends up like, okay, they end, he ends up turning around and she like drives towards him. She's like, okay, now we're going to really find out. And she gets out of the car and she's I thought like she was going to hit him. him. I thought so too. Which honestly, they, well, I guess in the unlikely event that it wasn't Milo, yeah. that would have been very bad. So mm-hmm. actually maybe it was better what she did. But And so she gets out of the car and he ends up like basically jousting with her. Yeah. <laughs> and he like, she ends up falling into like the glass and the side of the car breaking the glass it all Which shatters onto ab or not ab claire didn't make any sense because no. a body i'm sorry this is a kid on a bike hitting you it, it, you're not gonna break through a car window well even the way it broke too it's like that's not how a car glass breaks yeah um, it was very like and then I, I just I don't even know really what he did. Mm-hmm. Did he have he, he anything did. in his hand? No, I think essentially what scalpel? it did is that it like just he hit the car door with his bike. And so she ended up like 
falling. And, yeah. yeah, and maybe also know. the strength from him hitting the car door shattered the driver's door. And I don't know. He does have pain. super strength, so maybe he like threw a punch. <laughs> yeah, but she right, because she wasn't dead yet. Yeah, but I don't she's think. well. She's well. She was bleeding, bleeding a lot, lot profusely. There's a big trail of blood as he's pulling her off. Um, Miss uh, Claire comes to, and she's like, "Oh my God, she can't find." Marianne, she's not there anymore. Lots so she's of like blood, but no Marianne going to be through found. the woods, trying to find her. She's calling out her name, trying to look for her. And at this point, we do see like Milo is still like trying to like pulling her body, trailing her He's off. Like, Come with me. Yeah. Come with me. <laughs> and then we cut to after all this happens, Claire back at the police station. She's having another encounter with them. She told them obviously what had happened. At this point, um, she still has not disclosed the Milo information that she was connected to them when they were little, but she did tell them like, we think it's this boy who is attacking us, but he's like, well, here's the case while he's dead. Shows the da, da, corpse da, 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 that da. they found. But also you should have told me that you're one of the girls that he attacked when they were, y'all were little. Yeah. And he's like, you're withheld information, kind of everything that you said earlier. Like sh- this doesn't look good on you. Yeah. You're- because now it seems like you're, you're returning the to the scene of a childhood mm-hmm. crime. Yeah. And she's, and I was like, well, that is what she's doing. Yeah. I mean, but, she well, literally but he's did. implicating her yes. as well because he's saying like, none of this started in our town until you got here. Yeah. You showed up and now I've, there's like a trail of bodies in your mm-hmm. wake basically. And honestly, I would have liked it if Claire was the copycat killer mm-hmm. and then was like getting revenge on her friends for not helping more, her maybe? or something that would have been kind of cool but then i don't know how she would have been we no got Milo. motive though other than her being crazy because like yeah well i mean if her friends were telling her to like bury all the things and stuff like that but and that's then, after the fact things were happening well but then like, she did have to it. she did have to like leave town because she was like so debilitating and i feel like eventually her friends like, were just like resentment. Yeah, because eventually they were just kind of like, well, they you wouldn't checked, get up. They never checked on her. You wouldn't do really. anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And which they could have elaborated that more if they did go that route. Yeah. But. And so. That still, I think, would have been more exciting. Than, than what we got. Yeah. So the cop is kind of basically being a little douchey just towards her. But I mean, you know, it's, you know, he thinks she's crazy. And so at that and, point. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of people. Like yeah. he said, he's got a lot of fucking people dead and they didn't start dying until you showed up. Yeah. And he's like, why didn't you tell me? She's like, I didn't think it mattered. And he's, and I'm like, okay. Well, why do you, like, yeah. of course and that so mattered. He obviously think it's her, whatever. She gets a phone call. We don't get to see who she's calling just yet. But then the next day she's talking to Mr. Kelso um at the school and he's basically saying like you know the cops talk to me she's like i know and he's like they asked me a lot of questions but you know basically i got your back and then that's whenever we have uh the teacher the nurse coming in and she's like there's been an accident an accident yeah and, and i'm sorry mm-hmm. <laughs> claire's use of the word no from about here throughout the rest of the movie just cracked no. me she should be like no yeah. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's very TV acting. <laughs> it's funny. And so we have um her going into the nurse's office and we see and we figure out from the principal that like one of the school buses had an accident. The kids are in there like with like, you know, little ice packs and they're mm-hmm. like little boo-boos. No one was severely hurt, yeah. but it's still yeah, it, it was. It the gave. Kids. Yeah, and it gave the principal cause to like cancel school for the day. Mm-hmm. And she was. He was like, "Can you wait here with the kids until like everybody goes home?" And so they're all like having the parents come pick them up. Um, and even at that point, I love how she was like, "Fucking Milo." Yeah. And her breath. Right. Yes, I. Uh-huh. Was, I thought someone heard her because she yeah. didn't. <laughs> she was. It was a l- loud whisper. It was but loud. She's in there with the kids. She's talking to Evan, and she's making Evan promise not to talk to Milo again. She's like, "He's an evil kid. Don't talk to him again." After he guessed her and was just like, "I don't even know who you're talking about." But then, and then obviously, he was he like, knows. "She, she was like, don't like talk to your other friends." He was like, "I don't have any friends." And she's like, "But I'm your friend." She said, "But what about me?" And, and he was like, obviously okay. the facing man was just like, "Oh shit, not the teacher being my only friend." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then we have, um, we figure out that who she called was Mr. Jeter, Doctor Jeter, because he comes up to the school and he's talking to her and she's basically pleading to him like, "I need your help, and even if you don't believe me, this is all connected to you and it's your son, and you." I need you to stay with me you, because your word will be valid. Mm-hmm. If this is your kid, you. you'll yeah. be able to identify him and which i'm like that i makes need no you sense. on my side which was like okay who's gonna believe 
the abortion cl- clinic doctor who ever believed was making fun of back in the day. Like, yeah. who's going to believe that? Like, his word doesn't seem like it carries much weight. Yeah, he's been ostracized. Literally. Clearly. He said everyone was gawking at him <sighs> and stuff like that. But, yeah. I mean, if anyone was going to be able to identify Milo, would it would be, be Milo. Or it would be his, his father. father. Yeah. Um, Dr. Jeter. But at this point, we do have, after he sits down on the tiniest chair. <laughs> I put big man, little chair. <laughs> um, Milo turning off all the lights yep. in the school. Um, we have, uh-huh. um, yeah, poor doc- Mr. Kelso ends up getting attacked by Milo. Does he stab him in the dick? No. He had grabbed his nuts and oh, was squeezing them. Oh, that's what he did. Yeah. I rewound it even because I was like, what did he no, no, no. He, like, hit him okay, once. Okay, but he definitely went for the groin. Yeah, he had, like, hit him once, and then Doc- Mr. Kessel, like, tried to fight back, but then he grabbed him by the nuts, and so, like, he was squeezing them so hard that, like, he came down to his knees, and then he was stabbing him. Yeah. Yeah, in his face. And, and he neck. was, like, crushing his mm-hmm. head, like, mm-hmm. ugh. And so, yeah, we have him going off on Mr. Kessel, and they come just, like, literally t- 10 seconds too late, yeah. running out of the classroom to check up on him. Oh, my God. Um, and then we have um, essentially them driving Mr. Kelso, um, Mr. Doctor, whatever is fucking Doctor Jeter, and they're gonna go to the hospital. But Doctor Jeter is in like he it's too he's far; like, he won't make, make it. it. And I was so like, they end up a stopping gynecologist, not at, a brain surgeon. Yeah, and they stop at his clinic, and she's like, "No, not here." And then I was like, "Well, maybe he could help his penis if he got stabbed." I don't know, <laughs> but, but he but didn't no. get stabbed there. It was, uh, and, and but so, yeah. still, like, what? Yeah, I was also thinking that too. I was like, "You're not in general surgery. Like, this is like." You're you not, have a very specific skill set, and it's on the opposite side of the body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we have them getting back to the clinic, essentially, which is Dr. Jeter's practice, which is no longer a practice, but they're there. Um, and even at this point, I'm like, no, this is Dr. Jeter's in on this, because why would he go here? But yeah. we're back at their residence. He um, basically takes the, also Mr. The Kelso. Fact, I'm sorry, that Kelso could walk. I mean, I know they were supporting him, but his legs were like still consciously moving with mm-hmm. him. Uh, he could have made it to the hospital oh, yeah. That's if he had enough it. power because he said I, like you know i don't think he'll make it and then once i saw him walking i was like no yeah and i was like he could have made it to the- if he still has enough like brain function to move his legs and stuff yeah. this man could have made it to the hospital you're a fucking liar yeah and so that's our real life logic and so we're just like come on claire but claire is obviously gonna go into the house as she should not um and we have him taking um Mr. Kelso into this like the clinic the the the, the room surgery where he's gonna the room. surgery room sure and um if you could call it that and His he closes office. the door um so she doesn't get to go in there I'm like I would not have left him alone with Dr. Jeter yeah and so but at this like same thing same like um she's not using her brain but we leave him alone with Dr. Jeter and that's when we get the really spooky vibes from him like oh damn it okay this guy's in on it because he ends up like duct taking yeah and after mr kelso's like you used to be a weird kid i remember yeah. you and he was like i never forget a kid you and were too clean yeah you were too clean is and what he said also and i was thinking like was... damn how old is mr kelso because he's been even there since that dude was a kid yeah i guess maybe he was like 16 or probably something like a young janitor like... just kind of like the young janitor that we get at the yeah. end maybe just you know fresh baby um, face yeah, uh-huh. like an 18 year old yeah but yeah dude um he ends Tapes up getting duct taped yeah and we have i think at that point um miss oh yeah claire is trying to like get to a phone to call someone or call for help maybe Nine one one. that the phone lines don't work dead. it doesn't even like plugged in or anything there's no line and so that's whenever she ends up finding she finds the jars because she sees that the file cabinet we saw earlier is like a little open and she finds them in there and Um, milo we find out was an experiment he was the aborted baby yeah that's right um because at that point um or i think she had even found that out before him or maybe no no no. because at this point he attacks was jeter telling he tells her that after when they're on the stairs going up the stairs remember oh because at this point milo is under a table and she screams for dr jeter but it, Milo attacks her before like anybody can come to her. Yeah, and I guess fighting. I just had that way, way up because mm. I put, "Damn, tapes his mouth shut." Milo because is the aborted baby, an experiment. So I think, I think Doctor Jeter told told Kelso that because then I have phone lines are dead, and then I put, "Damn, Milo. Milo, this the music." I think, and then because then she finds the jars. Mm-hmm. She finds the jars. So I think Kelso at least at some point said it. Oh, okay. And then, or Dr. Jeter said it to uh, Kelso. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Yes. And so that's whenever 
she gets attacked by Milo. We have the jars breaking all over the floor. She, he's really going ham on her. And she, uh, mm-hmm. The way she was running up the stairs was very like, girl. Goes up the uh, stairs. Come, come but um, She was falling all right over the place. Right whenever he's behind her, that's whenever Dr. Jeter sedates, quote unquote, because I, I don't even think he really can sedate him, sedates um, the little boy, Milo. And that's when he explains to her on the steps, like, you're... There were some like she's he says, what did you think he was a ghost? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, she used no again there, too. Um, But then he says basically like, yes, there were some regrettable side effects that happened because he was an aborted fetus and all that. Yeah, he loves murder. (laughs) That's the side effect. He's yeah, very violent and they that he's got, you know, he's very strong, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then he was saying this is where he says you know, Milo blamed you for what happened. And then he says, and I blame you too. Mm -hmm. And basically that they both blame you and the other girls. Yeah. They're just crazy. And so she ends up being able to get away. She goes all the way upstairs to where she gets to the attic and he like locks her in there. And he had, he had also at this point, she said like, what happened to Mr. Kelso? And he said, nothing, but I don't think he's He's going to pull through. And it was nothing because he did nothing to him. He didn't Mm -hmm. help him at all. And so she ends up getting up there, and at that point, we do see that she finds, like, all the newspaper clippings from earlier, like, the wedding announcement, but with Dr. Jeter's face, like, over the guy's face, and um, she... Is very, it's was very, it Dr. Jeter's, or was it Milo's face? I thought it was Dr. Jeter's face. Oh, I thought it was Milo, because Milo was the one who wanted to marry them. It's true. Because it was on the wedding announcement they, of Ruth. It could have been him. I as think well. it was a weird photo of Milo. And so, and while this is happening, Doctor mm-hmm. Jeter is putting, like, he's a pretty a Milo's a pretty normal looking kid. Mm-hmm. He doesn't Very look like that normal. weird. No, I yeah. mean, he's got maybe some messed up teeth, but other than that, he looks normal. like a normal kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Doctor Jeter's like putting a muzzle on him, mm-hmm. a straight up, like all it's over like his headpiece. head cage. Yeah. yeah, and then is we see him and in, going to inject him with some sort of. That Sedation. Some, yeah. yeah, and then I was like, is this... At that point, though, I was like, is this some sort of growth inhibitor that mm-hmm. maybe that's why he was still so small? Oh, like, what know. if Dr. Jeter was making him not grow past that age, too? Maybe. That's giving me Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, and so he is going up to basically start attacking Claire again, and he's just banging on the thing, and she's trying to hold him back, hold him down. Right. This is what I also thought it could have been with mm. the um, air vents, because oh. whenever he does finally break, which through the, the fact that he just uses his thing. head, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Well, he does it so much that he passes out. Yeah, yeah. And so whenever like she's looking through the piece of shattered wood, there, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe that That's was, what it. She thought it was I think it was a little bit of that combined with. The um from behind later the on. stairs, yeah. yeah. Later on, with cutting the ankles, um, I, I think it was kind of a mixture of both of that. But she uses that opportunity once he does knock a hole through it and mm-hmm. is knocked unconscious. She uses that opportunity to unlock Unlatch. the room because, yeah, earlier whenever Jeter she locked, locked her in up. the room, yeah. And so she walks down the stairs. She then uh, once again gets attacked by Milo. <laughs> Because uh, he pops up and they're fighting again. And she um was going to hide mm-hmm. and stuff and then like hides behind a hides behind a door. Yeah. Which is like what? It's not smart. What? And mm-hmm. then but also behind that door is Dr. Jeter's corpse. Yeah. Because Milo had murdered him. Yep. Whenever he tried to inject him with that syringe. Mm-hmm. Trying to control him, but he can't control Milo. And so we have another altercation between them and they're just going ham at it. And then I think at some point she kind of does walk away and she like gets down on her knees at some point. I don't know. Remember what she's doing. She's grabbing someone, but he comes from behind her and injects her with this. Yeah. Sedative. Cause she, I think she like kind of knocked him out uh, for a second. Out. Right? And yeah. so she's like, Oh, I'm safe. And it's yeah. like, bitch, no, you're not. And yeah, she goes to look at something, pick it up off the ground. And then he's like, tap, tap. He literally just tap taps <laughs> on her, her shoulder and sedates her. And then we wake up in a wedding dress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's in that wedding dress. And I guess she's downstairs, right? Or in a yeah. basement, it looks like. Or I think she's in one of the bedrooms. Oh, you're right. You're right. Because she goes down to that's the basement later to down. find all of her friends also in she hears. Dresses. That's right. Because she hears. Screaming. A sound, yeah. Or something like that, mm-hmm. yeah. And Milo comes up in a little tux and he's like, it's your wedding day. Aren't you happy? Yeah. And it's like, ew, no. 
And then he, ooh, the way he starts cutting her dress off, and is he's like, like the groom dressed up as the groom, and she, yeah, he's taking the little nodges off of her wedding dress. It's very sexual again, just like the yeah. beginning with May, because he's he's. It's like a button down all the way down the back. He's like turned her over. Kind She's of chained almost up. She's mounts, shackled. Yeah. And then he kind of almost mounts her. Yeah. And then it's like popping each of these buttons off like one by one, like cutting down her dress. And it was just very like. It's creepy. Ugh. Yeah. So she's chained up. But that at this point, Kelso Mr. Kelso just rescue. comes and picks him up and throws him across the room. Just eats him. He was like, get off. Yeah. Her. Um, and they end up getting into an altercation as well. She's still trying to get out of her shackles and we have Mr. Kelso and him in like the restroom and he's drowning him essentially. Yeah. And I was at first I was like, boy, don't leave her tied up. Like, yeah, I mean, he, you, cause he was trying through. to help her at one point, but then the little boy got back up again. So he's like, well, gotta go take care of this. And someone falls through the ceiling at one point. Mm-hmm. I think they both commotion. fall through yeah. and then that's when they get into that bathroom. And then, mm-hmm. so he starts drowning him, but then he dies. Yeah, because Mr. Kelso gets, passes out because well, it's so much, well, right? Milo stabs him. Uh, okay, he gotcha. has a scalpel in his hand, and he uh, stabs him. Gotcha. Right into his like. I abdomen. thought he was just coming to his wounds. Yeah, gotcha. I think it was a mixture okay. of that, and yeah. then also being stabbed uh, once more on top yeah. of that. Yeah, and it was just like the nammer, nammer, mm. the nail in the coffin. <laughs> yeah, and she does eventually get get unchained, and that's whenever yeah, right. She hears that. Um, scream and she ends up opening the door as i'm just like girl why don't why wouldn't you just leave but okay she opens the door and goes to investigate and that's when she goes in there and she finds that uh marianne is like all in the stirrups oh like in the wedding well even even whenever she goes and finds his body sorry milo's well Mm. kelso's body Mm -hmm. kind of hunched over milo's in the bathtub the way she she just kind of is like oh my god and she like turns around and it looks like she's kind of like because she thinks it's done sulking and stuff and it's like get out of the house yeah right now Mm -hmm. she takes her sweet time and then yeah then she's still hearing the stuff in the house and i was like oh is marion still alive i don't think marion was still alive i don't know what was making those sounds i thought see what i was thinking at this point i thought oh my god may is still down there and she's been like kept down there in captivity all these years i thought it was may but then it wasn't too i would have preferred that better but yeah we see that it's marion she's in the little wedding dress she's in the stirrups and she's still alive but like barely hanging on and she's just like making those noises and then we have and you see the blood her, yeah. by her because he said which then i was like wait so was marion pregnant before that no i don't think she was um no. and so then because he said like later on he says that he got like a baby from her and he basically says that i don't think it turned out too well i didn't hear that oh Maybe I dreamed that, but I feel like it's in here somewhere. Uh, maybe. I just I didn't don't know hear that part. It was creepy, though. And it was just very disgusting. I was like, oh, oh. Um, but then he comes up. Yeah, because he says, um, hi, Claire. And she starts attacking him there. Mm-hmm. And then she's running off, and it's she gets like a little museum of her friends. It was yeah, very Michael. She runs into Abby, um, who's also in a wedding dress as well. And she's had enough at this point. But then Milo starts attacking her at this point, like you said earlier from underneath the stairs or something and he he says "Uh oh claire's got a boo-boo yeah as he's slashing her ankles oh she's got another one yeah Uh uh-huh he's just slashing at her um but at this point she ends up trying to get away from him she goes up the stairs she's like knocking and pounding on the door but she can't get out because obviously it's locked so she goes back down and that's whenever she's going through like the bottom part of a house you know like when it has like the stilts kind of part and yeah because she she tries to get out She's like, yeah, going through. Mm-hmm. She's like on her there. knees at this point, like crawling. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And because I'm guessing the basement was only under part of the house. Mm-hmm. Like they only dug deep enough for that. And then the rest, because my, like my house growing up was like that, where it had a crawl space underneath mm-hmm. and there were like areas where you could get to it and stuff, but there was no actual basement. Yeah. No. Same. And so it's very much like That's that. That's what it gave. Cross. It gave like the visit when they're underneath the house. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um. But there's still like a weird little window thing too, mm-hmm. which I was like, this is giving barbarian, mm-hmm. which I know barbarian just Even came when out. She, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, she just like narrowly is like getting to the window and then mm-hmm. all, uh, of course, Milo gets her there Milo pops up, yeah. and he pulls her back in and then, you know, they're just, he's 
kind of like talking to her and stuff, but that she like stabs him in the stomach. Yeah, with a piece of wood. Yeah, a big like long like piece a of wood, big like a two by wooden f- stake. Yeah. yeah, essentially. Yeah. It was cut off, and then she just it was sharp at the end, and she and just his death right was a it. little comical. Yeah, as he was going down, he was. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Milo. I loved it. Um, and so yeah, then essentially we're like, okay, yay! Now I think Milo's dead, and so um, which I'm thinking like, no, he probably can't die. He's gonna come back. He's but. he's like Michael. Yeah, and so this um, is a child Michael. Yeah, and so that's whenever she ends up being able to climb out of the basement, very barbarianish, like when she gets out of that thing mm-hmm. almost. Um, and that's pretty much like it transitions after that to we get shots of the school uh, with our new school, janitor. A new day. There's a new janitor. Because Kelso's dead. And we have um, basically we him, hear Milo breathing and we have the little you can always hear like that little spoke with the card noise yeah. in the back and the little ding and ding little bell. from ding. the bike and we see Milo was here written on the wall yeah a little graffiti and, and then it pans to the janitor and then it I think it pans back to like the like empty hallway and then back to Milo was here yeah and then we end with mm-hmm. young Claire's attack again yeah it was just a shot of the same shot of when Milo open the door to mm-hmm. then stab Claire that we got at the very just beginning. Another jump scare. Yeah, it was just yeah. a little like to very kind of sinister. Bagul. Yes, very sinister with Bagul at the end just being like mm-hmm. Hello. like that was the same idea. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah that's and that's nineteen ninety eight. That's Milo. I Milo. am just very thankful that other people were also afraid of this film mm-hmm. um because i thought i had completely dream. made this up and while i apparently still did make parts of it up um i not all of it didn't make all of it up mm-hmm. so that was nice yeah a lot of the comments i'm trying to find some right now um i remember watching this as a kid i've been trying to find it for years most of my life and literally just found it i asked everyone i knew throughout this whole time and no one knew what I was talking about. I convinced myself that I dreamt this up. Now I can die happy. There's mm-hmm. someone named Isaac Vargas. Gotcha. Who commented on that and stuff. And it was just, I like that everyone was uh, this person said, I remembered watching this movie with my sister when we were kids. And the only reason why I'm like, I was reminded of it was because my husband suggested we name our son Milo. And she was like, absolutely nope. the fuck not. Um, he so will be a murderer. It was just very fun to see that a lot of, other people actually had seen this movie yeah and that they were scared too because when i watched it back i was like what you're not the only one because i i also watched i felt much scarier films growing up and then yeah. was just kind of like okay uh, yeah and then this one for some reason got stuck to me. with you well Which, there's always those films that yeah. like have that for some reason they just latch on to you yeah it, and this was yeah. one of them Mm-hmm. It's kind of like for me, signs like yeah. by M Night Shyamalan. Like I, I watched that today. I'm like, this really isn't that scary. But I remember, I was, I had to be like ten. When that I came remember out. lots of people being afraid and of I, signs. Well, I watched it in the theater with my sisters. I for some reason that I had, I think my parents like made them me made me tag along with them to be like, if you well, if you want to go out with your friends, take your little brother. Mm-hmm. They always used to do that shit to them. And so, um, I just went. And so I'm like, why am I being punished? And so, um, <laughs> yeah. And I just remember like. Oh, that one scene where the alien is walking by and the like the Mexico news camera footage and the little kids are like, Esta ya, esta ya. Mm-hmm. And it's like at a birthday party. I don't know why that like scared, scared the shit out of you. Scared me so much yeah. to like years later I was still just like like what, gives you, you the heebie jeebies. If, if you think about it, it gives you the heebie jeebies. Yeah. yeah. So I was just like, uh yeah. But Hey, I, I mean know. Andrew Andrew suggested that we cover signs. He oh, was like, I like that's a horror movie. Like y'all should cover it. it. Yeah. And I was like, no, oh, we should. Okay. We could yeah. do a whole M. Night Shyamalan series. We could. We really could. Honestly, because he has so many. So many. Um, and some a some are a hit, good. some a miss. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I know that he doesn't have necessarily the best reputation of making films, but I kind of genuinely do enjoy his films. Yeah, there are quite a few There's films. There's just a lot of... I mean, his films are also, too, like, they're not necessarily just, like, they're the more... They... they are they my most favorite film ever? No. No. But they still have a very interesting he's, and unique and approach. That's, yeah, that's the thing. Because he's always, I feel like, trying to inject like either a message or mm-hmm. like something like that's underneath everything. It's, the, I it's feel a like little you more cerebral. To, you have to think. Yeah. This is, none of his films, I feel, are very, uh, you're not going to just mindless go in and be like, blank, blank, yep, blank. Yep, Here's got it, got what it, it is. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. you have to, you have to use your brain a bit, which yeah. is probably why a majority of people don't like them. Mm-hmm. Um because no one likes to think and it's we have google to think for us escapism you know you're not supposed to but yeah yeah um but yeah are you ready to get into the booze yes Yes. i'm curious i would give this a solid three really yeah i enjoyed it 
I yeah. thought, I mean, like, I, I thought it was good. I thought I it was okay. I, especially when I first saw like the YouTube, like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is this? Yeah. Cause you sent it to me and you're like, is this right? And I was like, I think so. And I, cause I was, I think I was, I don't remember where I was, but yeah, I was doing something, but I was because it read does, the comments and I was like, no one's complained that it's a bad version of the film. So I think, yes. Well, it just, it gives also, like I said, multiple times like that very like tv movie like straight to vhs maybe um and those don't always have the best storyline or the best plot or look the best but for what it was like i was like oh yeah this is this is it was enjoyable and especially considering we watched it on youtube so mm -hmm. it was a little i mean it clearly looked a little like bootleg yeah um the quality wasn't the best yeah um it was a little pixelated at points but i mean it was good i liked it i thought it was a good story i other they were like towards the end i feel like there are a lot of other avenues it could have gone that mm-hmm. would have been more impactful yeah but what it ended up doing is fine and for the most part i other really than would like have Claire's loved acting, maybe some more explanation on why milo was still child size right um, like being like, oh, I've injected him with a growth inhibitor or something like that. And it just needed to be explained for you. Just because he he explained everything else. I like mean, he's Milo also was an, an aborted fetus that came back to life. That's true. Yeah. But and also, like, did he grow? Why did he stop growing at that age? I get it. I get what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. why so for some reason? Because if it's Milo he, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> Make it now. <laughs> twenty years, twenty plus years later, ninety eight to. I don't, um, I don't know math. Anyways. But yeah, um, I I would give it a three, a solid three. And I know I've probably given other movies lower ratings that should have gotten a higher rating. But if we're, I don't know, I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. it? Yeah, I thought it was pretty fun. Well, good. It, it was, was fun. a fun experience it was for very, a horror movie. I thought it was fun. Yeah, it yeah. was fun for me to go back and watch it again mm-hmm. and really just be like, I, <laughs> I mean, really the amount that I didn't remember was amazing. Yeah. Because I really only remembered raincoat bicycle wedding dress and apparently a fabricated memory of floor vents that yeah, weren't actually there that wasn't actually there. yeah um, i'm telling you i'm sure you saw something else and it, you just, yeah like, it must have been at the them. same time it must have been that killer clown movie where they were like under i just remember there was all these clowns and then it, it almost felt like almost like a purge kind of movie where mm. it was definitely people doing it, but they were like dressed up as clowns. Gotcha. I think. But then there was this underwater sex scene that I remember going like, am I supposed to be watching this? It sounds like <laughs> Underworld or Underwater or Water. Uh, the one with, oh, I don't know. Um, if you remember, please tell me because I've not been able to find this film either. I've also never tried. So that <laughs> that's makes sense. probably why. That would be the reason why. Yeah. But, but I've never come across it and like yeah. just looking through everything mm-hmm. either and never been like, oh, that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, I was thinking I was between a 2.5 or a 3 as well. And then you can't get this whole a 3, a 2.5 if I gave it a 3. Because <laughs> I like this movie. I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, it's no, I, I, no pressure. I do think I was thinking 3. I did have obviously some issues with Claire's acting. Um, and then. But the, I see. I don't. I think like that makes sense for a person who's gone through things. And oh like, well, not not like the way. Like I mean, yes, I had some issues with how she acted, mm-hmm. but it was more so her delivery, delivery of lines. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. No, it was it was mainly her. She just wasn't a very inspiring lead Mm -hmm. it was just kind of like girl what no don't go in the house Mm -hmm. what are you doing like the one where you're just like screaming at her because it's like why are you like this those are the best horror movies though (laughs) because you're just like it can't be so logical because like well none no there's no horror movie lead is logical exactly um but she just felt especially not there for me Mm -hmm. i just think i just overall her and character was just kind of like Yeah. Um, but it, it more so my issue was with her acting. Delivery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And cause then there were some other moments in the film where like other people were doing a good job. And so I think it just kind of really like she stood in a kind of a harsh comparison mm-hmm. with some of those. And there, there were plenty of moments where her acting was just fine. Um, it was just her inflection. A lot of the times gave very, I love how we have a different, like we do have different takes. I thought yeah. everyone else didn't do good. I thought really? she was the best one oh, in the film. No, I, I, I didn't like Dr. I, Jeter wasn't doing anything for me. The principal wasn't doing anything for me. Her best friends weren't doing anything for me, especially the one who was a bitch. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. 
like how you said earlier, yeah. Milo Jeter, Milo Jeter. I thought it was overacted. Yes, that that moment I will agree. I was thought her whole role totally. was just overacted, and then, um, Mr. Kelso to me was just like, I, well, mostly for me, Mr. I was, Kelso was but an Mr. asshole. Mr. Kelso, Mr. Kelso to <laughs> me felt like the ghost of the movie because I was just like, why is Mr. How Kelso are you everywhere? Still alive? Well, and I was just like, why are you he here? Was, he was everywhere. Yeah, like he happened to be everywhere. Whenever she almost hit the kid on the bike, whenever she was in the classroom and he happened to be there, whenever like the next day after, um, she was attacked and like the whole gel thing and like she had to make the phone call mm-hmm. and I was thinking, wait, did she call him? I was just thinking like, why is he everywhere? Yeah, but yeah, I mean. That's that is that's true. Mm-hmm. I feel like Dr. Jeter was probably the most notable actor to have been in this film, I, other than Mila Kunis. Who was he? Um, Vincent Chavielli. Chavielli. Mm-hmm. I don't really know how to say his last name. He was in Ghost. He was in Batman Returns, um, in a few other movies. But I feel like he was the only one that, other than Mila Kunis, mm-hmm. that I really recognized. Which and she then, wasn't even like a star then. It's just like after the fact that we recognize her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah obviously. Yeah. Like if she wasn't even credited. Yeah. That she hadn't quite made it to. But then. They couldn't. She's literally Legal the reason. Largest. She was like 10. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, But overall. Yeah, I, I, I would say a three as well. Because, mm-hmm. I mean. It's still, it's a movie that holds some sentimental value for Mm -hmm. me because clearly it messed me up enough as a kid to where I remembered remembered it. it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then again, my fear might be (laughs) not exactly this film, um, but there were still moments that I was just like, no. Yeah. Because, and then the whole wedding dress scene, I do remember the wedding dresses and just being like, uh uh. Yeah. Oh, also. So on Saturday, I went to an antique mall Uh and I found a like antique syrup, like gynecology little bed. How did you, how does one come across that? It was just in this. Yeah. That's what that is. It looks like it has a new top put Mm -hmm. on it. But that it's got the fucking stirrups and the bottom. I was like, this is some this people is would an be into old, that. Yeah. I know. I almost wanted to buy it, mm-hmm. but I took a picture because we had, I like I knew we were covering this film. So I was yeah. like, oh, I have to take a picture of this. <laughs> that's wild. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That They're is. out there. So if you want to go to the Montgomery Street Antique Mall or something in Fort Worth, you can go there and buy you a gynecology table. It'll be there. I don't think we should be recommended people to buy gynecology tables that just feels like a problem waiting it feels it feels weird because it's like why do you need that yeah and if unless you, you're a gynecologist mm, and it's fun office decoration there you or go or really cool christmas nope nope <laughs> no nope. decoration <laughs> that was like not a christmas present baby jesus oh god in the manger <laughs> baby jesus um uh, but put Mary in there. Mary, baby literally. Jesus she at the bottom. Marion was the a bitch. Body. She was my least favorite character throughout the whole movie. Oh, that Marion. Sorry, I meant Mary as like Jesus' oh, Mary. mom. Oh no, my bad. That was um, her name, right? Mary. That's and her. Joseph. Yeah. Uh, but once again, you guys, thank you for listening. We are in the lovely Rogue Media Network studios. That's right. They always take great care of Very us. Very good care of us. You can listen to our podcast and many other podcasts on their uh, official website, which is. RogueMediaNetwork.com. Bam. And you can also listen to all of those podcasts and us on a slew of podcasting platforms, the biggest two being Apple's Podcasts. <laughs> Apple's po- Apple Podcasts. Apple's Podcasts. Apple's Podcasts. <laughs> Apple guys. and Spotify have a baby. They do. Oh, yeah. Spotify. That would be fun. Spotacast. But also, oh, Spotacast sounds much cooler. Spotacast. They should really go with that. They really can. Um, um, TM. But also, Spotify. <laughs> but wherever you do listen, don't forget to rate, review, like, and subscribe. That's right, because that is the only way we can get ahead in this world. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to tell us what movies traumatized you as a child yeah. and what you would like to hear what covered. What is your Milo? What is your signs? Yes, what is your Milo? What is your signs? Let us know. And you can do that by reaching out to us on Instagram. And that is at Boo Bays Podcast. And that is B-O-O-B-A-E-S because we are your Boo Bays, not your Boo Babes. That's right. Mm. And we haven't picked what we're going to cover next, but no, you'll... Won't see you'll find out you will find out and i'm sure it'll be great and thanks for maybe we should just cover signs we'll think about it that'd be fun we will think about it so until then time yeah until we make decisions
Happy, uh, wait, Thanks- no, Thanksgiving's already, no, already we're had. recording this before Thanksgiving, but. But y'all had a happy Thanksgiving last week and y'all are. Happy Christmas. Having a happy holidays. Happy, uh, happy holidays. Yeah. Everything's now Christmas because after Thanksgiving, it's Christmas time. Yeah. Essentially. Everything's already Christmas. I watched a Christmas movie yesterday mm. and I was dying. I need to watch the Lindsay Lohan movie, Christmas movie that's new. Oh, there's a new one. Mm. It's on Netflix. She I watched. Came out there. It's her first film in like 10 years or something like that. Oh, fun. I'll have to watch it. I watched Love yeah. Hard, which was. It was very cute. Mm. Um, it's a comedian mm. who is the lead. His name's Josh something. Lynn. Josh Lynn. Mm. I, well, that's his name in the film. I don't know gotcha. if that's his actual name. Oh. Um, but I think he directed it as well. Mm-hmm. And then it's a combination. It's called Love Hard because mm-hmm. of Die Hard. They oh, have okay. a their first like initial meeting is Die Hard. Like what's a better Christmas movie? Die Hard or Love Actually? So then mm. Love Actually, but then and they Die come Hard. It was really together. it was a super cute movie and I loved it and it made yeah. me feel a lot better. That's cute. Yeah. Oh, really that it. was actually I watched that Saturday. So I watched Milo, then I watched that. What a di- like what a dichotomy. A, yeah, yeah, very different. That's good. You got to be well-rounded balance. Yes. And speaking of balance, I that's have it. to go balance out my bladder by peeing. And me so too. until then, <laughs> bye, babe. <laughs> bye, babe. <laughs>